In the question, we have a 42 year old. She is female and she presented. She is a known case of hypertension and rheumatoid arthritis who is on angiotensin receptor blockers, methotrexate, and sertolizumab pegol. So, we already know that sertolizumab pegol is an anti TNF alpha drug, right? It's an anti TNF. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder. This is the question. This is flashing in front of your screen. And what we know from the question? In the question, we have a 42 year old. She is female and she presented. She is a known case of hypertension and rheumatoid arthritis who is on angiotensin receptor blockers, methotrexate, and sertolizumab pegol. So, we already know that sertolizumab pegol is an anti TNF alpha drug, right? It's an anti TNF alpha drug. So, she is on methotrexate and an anti TNF drug for her rheumatoid arthritis and she is on ARB for her hypertension. And she presented with shortness of breath, right? And they have also mentioned the grade of the shortness of breath, which is significant. She has grade 3 NYHA shortness of breath, right? And when we examine the patient, the patient had a BP of 160 and her JVP is raised and her NT pro BNP is 300 picogram per ml. Now, the, the examiner is asking you among his, among her current medications, which one would, we, would you like to stop, right? Would you like to stop ARBs? That's our option A or would you prefer to stop methotrexate? That is our uh, option B or would you prefer to stop sertolizumab pegol or there is no need for stopping any medication. That's our last option, right? Now, let us address the diagnosis of the patient. The known diagnosis is hypertension for which patient is on ARB and the known another known diagnosis is RA for which patient is on methotrexate and sertolizumab pegol. Com presenting complaint is shortness of breath which is significant NYHA grade 3 and there is a raised JVP suggestive of one possibility is right heart failure. And when we look at the N terminal pro BNP for the patient, right, that is 300 picogram per ml. Look at the age of the patient, that is 42. For her age, right, our NT pro BNP levels more than 125 picogram per ml would be considered as significantly elevated, right. So she has elevated NT pro BNP. So, keeping that in mind now, what is our diagnosis? She has raised JVP, she has elevated NT pro BNP, she has presented with grade 3 NYHA dyspnea. So, that is a clear pointer, right? So, we are dealing with a patient of a known hypertension and RA presenting with heart failure, right? So, she has presented with heart failure. Now, do we need to stop any of her medication because she has got the heart failure? Like, should we stop ARBs? Obviously not, right? So, we would prefer to treat a patient with heart failure with beta blockers and AC inhibitors or, or ARBs. So, that is something that I don't want to touch. I will continue with that. Right. So, between methotrexate and sertolizumab pegol, do we need to stop anything? So, to answer this question, we need to look at the ACR 2021 guidelines. So, let me take you through the ACR 2021 guidelines. Now, according to ACR 2021 guidelines, how do we treat a case of rheumatoid arthritis? Right. So, the rheumatoid arthritis, the first point we need to know about the management of rheumatoid arthritis is if there is moderate to high disease activity score, moderate to high disease activity score, what is our preferred drug? Now, ACR 2021 preferably favors monotherapy, right? And if you have to pick one drug, it is always, always methotrexate, right? So, it favors monotherapy. Methotrexate is the preferred agent for moderate to high disease activity. Obviously, when I say moderate to high disease activity, you are assessing using the activity scores, right? Okay. And if there is low disease activity, if there is low disease activity according to the disease activity scores, then you can prefer the drug of choice can be said to be HCQS, hydroxychloroquine, right? Okay. Now, once you start the initial medications, right, particularly for patients with moderate to high disease activity, you are reassessing the patient within three months and within six months. Our goal, right? We we follow something called as treat to target principle. So, our goal is at the end of three months improvement, right? By three months, we want to see the improvement in disease activity scores. And at the end of six months, we want to achieve remission or significantly low disease activity scores, right? Remission or low disease activity scores. So, the details of what counts to be called as remission according to ACR, I have discussed in the main videos and I would recommend you to go through that. For time being, I will tell you that if you are following the Simplified Disease Activity Index, SDI, right, then a score of less than 3.3 would mean the patient has achieved remission, right. That's how we manage. 
Now, if at this particular time frames, if these yardsticks are not met, you are not seeing any improvement even after right? starting the methotrexate or whatever additional, uh, whatever alternative DMA is you are chosen. Right? At the end of three months, there is no improvement. You will move on to this phase two of the treatment or if at the end of six months, there is no remission or low disease activity, you will be moving on to the phase two of the treatment. Now, in phase two treatment, how do we manage? We are basically looking at the presence of prognostically unfavorable factors, right? So, in the next phase, in phase 2, we will be looking at presence of prognostically unfavorable factors. So, if there is prognostically unfavorable factors present, like that is basically like evidence of early joint damage on your ultrasound showing marginal erosions or there may be very high disease activity scores, prognostically unfavorable factors. Right. So, if they are present, if they are present and if they are not present. So, if they are not present, you will probably choose an alternative conventional DMARDs. Right. So, for example, if you had started with, let me say, hydroxychloroquine. Now, you can think of leflunamide or you can think of methotrexate. Or if you had started with methotrexate, you can think of adding leflunamide or you can think of adding hydroxychloroquine. That is how you will probably manage a case. Right. But if there are prognostically unfavorable factors present, and particularly remember very high disease activity scores or having the evidence of the joint damage, early joint damage on your ultrasound or x-rays. Such patients, you will probably think of a biological DMARD, right? Or you will think of a target specific DMARD, right? Okay. Now, when you choose biological DMARDs, what ACR recommends is that if you are thinking of choosing a TNF alpha inhibitors right or tnf alpha blockers dmards you need to have caution about heart failure if patient already has heart failure right if heart, heart failure diagnosis is already pre established in that case preferably avoid using the tnf alpha blockers right think of using other biologicals or target specific dmards that is what the initial statement here mentions addition of a non tnf inhibitor biological dmrd or Target specific DMRD is conditionally recommended over addition of a TNF inhibitor for patients with New York Heart Association, heart failure, class 3 or class 4 symptoms and an inadequate response to conventional DMRD. So, in this case, that was the scenario, right? But the heart failure diagnosis is not pre-established. So, if the patient presents or develops heart failure when he is on the biologicals, particularly TNF alpha agent, how do we manage? Switching to a non-TNF alpha inhibitor biological DMARD or a target specific DMARD is conditionally recommended over continuation of a TNF alpha inhibitor for patients taking a TNF alpha inhibitor who develop heart failure, right? So, point number one and point number two are very, very important for us to remember, right? So, in case if patient develops heart failure when he is on the TNF alpha inhibitor, we should be switching over to another biological agent or a target specific DMARD. And if the patient is already have the heart failure with the class 3 of class 4 NYHA symptoms, in that case preferably avoid initiation of the TNF alpha blockers. This is what the ACR recommends. So, now let us go back to the question and address it. Right. So, in this case patient has the grade 3 NYHA symptoms and he the heart failure diagnosis is something that we can already agree upon. So, in that case the drug that needs to be stopped here is sertolizumab pegol. Right. In that place you can bring in some other biological or you can bring in some target specific DMARD so that the patient's rheumatoid arthritis does not experience a flare up, right? So, the correct answer for this question is our option C, sertolizumab pegol. That is the drug that I would prefer to stop or withdraw and switch over to add additional drug in the form of a biological non TNF alpha blocker or a target specific DMARD, right? Okay.